Hello there and welcome to this week's casual valuation. It will definitely be an unusual one, not because it's chess.com, but because it is valuation of a private company. That means we don't have any financial statements to look into, no balance sheet, income statement or cash flow. There is no share price movement to look into for the last 3, 5, 10 years. There is absolutely nothing. So basically what we need to do is do some research to understand how the company makes money, or in this case, how the website makes money and come up with some assumptions and value the website. Now, the reason why I mentioned website is because chess.com is being owned by chess.com LLC, but the company itself has a lot of other stuff that are valuable. First of all, they recently acquired Play Magnus that comes with chessables and they have chess kit. They have significant presence on social media, such as YouTube, an account with a significant number of subscribers, but, as mentioned, all of that is part of chess.com LLC and that will not be valued in this video. We are only looking into chess.com, the website, the biggest chess platform, and that is what this video will be all about. So how does a website make money of this kind? Well, it makes money from its users, that's quite clear. And I have this fairly simple overview that I think is a great starting point. What we need is we need to understand the number of active users, we need to come up with a number on that. Then we need to divide those between free and premium users and as each one contributes differently to the value of the website. So where do we start? Where do we all go to when we have a question and we would like to get the answer? Of course, the answer is Google. Now, the first thing that I got when I tried to find the number of users was, in as most cases, Wikipedia. And the Wikipedia mentions that there are 93 million plus users. This is a very high number um, and I don't think that this number can be trusted for two reasons. First of all, it doesn't mention whether this is a total number of users or active number of users. And it's very likely if it is correct, the total, but that's not what we're looking for. The second reason is there is no source. I mean, anyone can change anything that's on Wikipedia. So in this case, we don't know who plugged this number in. So I thought, well, maybe chess.com has some information that we can use. And I searched for chess.com. And if you take a look at the first result that is a sponsored ad from chess.com, that says meet 40 million chess players. Now you can already see that this is much lower than the number from Wikipedia. So that is quite clear that was not correct. The second result is chess.com where it says there are over 50 million members. And both of these are information coming from chess.com. So if someone from the marketing department is looking into this, it might make sense to adjust the first result, the advertisement that is probably on autopilot since the time chess.com had 40 million players. Um, or, or it could be that there are 50 million members, but there's this gap of 10 million is 10 million players who just don't want to meet you. I don't know, maybe that is the case. So what is the correct number? Of course, between two, very likely it's the second one. Probably that is the more up-to-date one. Can these numbers be trusted? I think that is the case, but that doesn't mean that all of these users are active. Some of them log in every day. Some of them play once a week. Some of them play once a month. It's not really a good estimate for the active members. So what makes sense to do next? So I thought, well, so far what I have is, is great to share with you but not really usable for the model. So I went a completely other way. One of the numbers that is available on the chess.com website is the number of players that are active at that moment, so the number of chess players that are playing a game. And I noted that number down at different times of the day. And I noticed that of course, sometimes it was as high as close to 300,000. Sometimes it was closer to 150, but the average was 240,000. So if you just check the number, very likely it will be around that. But that doesn't mean that those are all the active members. Those are the active players at that moment in time. And if I take a look at the poll that is on chess.com's forum, there was this, and it's an old one, but I don't think um, it's significantly changed in any direction. The average time that is being spent playing or studying chess, it is around an hour a day. 
Basically what it means if I combine the two types of information is at the moment there are 240,000 players online. In an hour there will be 240,000 new chess players. In an hour there will be 240 new and so on. Basically the number of active players in a given day is close to 5.8 million. This is just one way that I thought was more reasonable than taking any of the information that are publicly that is publicly available because this in my opinion is more accurate. Now, we have something to start with, right? We have the total active users a day. Now we need the split between free and premium. Now you see I already have filled that in here. The re the way I estimated that was I looked into a couple of tournaments that are hosted on chess.com and if you're a premium user, you get this flare. It is optional, an icon close to the name that kind of differentiates you from the free users. And looking at the percentage, it was somewhere on 10, 11 percent of of the participants that were premium users. On the other side, there could be premium users that have decided not to publicly um, differentiate from the free users. So I use the 12 percent as a reasonable estimate. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. What that means is that on any given day, there are close to 5.1 million free users and close to 700,000 premium users. Now, each one, as we know, contributes differently. If we take a look at the premium users, that is the easiest one to estimate as the packages, the, price, the prices are at least out there. We can see we have different plans. Um, and the prices, of course, in my case, are in euros because I'm based in Europe. So the average subscription is probably somewhere in the middle. I can imagine that majority are using the, the, the cheapest version. Um, if that is the case, then it depends whether someone bought it on discount or not. It could be as low as four euros, close to four dollars and seven on the high end. So I used the seven dollars as a as an estimate of the average revenue that is brought by a premium user on average. Now the ads are a bit more tricky to estimate because, of course, it all depends on how many ads are being shown. Um, so far, looking at chess.com, there are not that many ads. So this is a model that is pretty much there to kind of cover the cost that they have for keeping the website up and running for the free users. They're not really making money on the free users. That's not something that is creating value for them. If we take a look at Facebook, for example, or Meta, Facebook and Instagram, there's so many ads there. Um, if we take a look at YouTube, of course, there's so many ads. If we take a look at Pinterest, there are quite some ads, but the, the time spent there is much lower. So the ads, for example, in a given year could be three, four dollars a year. But chess.com, I don't think is even at that level. So I'm, I'm using the one dollar as an estimate. Now, again, I could be wrong at any of these assumptions, but this is the best estimate that I have. Now, if that is the case, what we're missing is the premium users. Now you'll notice that I have doubled that amount. Why? Because in my previous assumptions, if there are 700,000 users, that means that the same 700,000 users are logging every single day in a given year. And that is not reasonable. Chess, in my opinion, is a very addictive game. So what I did was I doubled the number of premium users to get a better estimate of the revenue that they bring in a given year. And the, re the rationale here is that about half of the premium users are online on any given day. It doesn't have to be the same ones, right? They, some, some log every day, some log once a week. And I could be again wrong in any of these assumptions. But this is a more fair estimate compared to the 700,000. Now, if you believe that premium users uh, or, or on any given day, there are 33% that are online, just multiply the 700,000 by three and you get to 2.1 million. But there is one more event that uh, has happened in the last less than, I'd say two, three years. We have the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit, that had significant impact on the number of searches for chess on Google Trends. You can see quite here the, the spike. But if we, if we exclude that, it's quite clear that there is some upwards movement when it comes to chess. The reason why I'm looking into this is when I'm valuing a company, I want to understand, is it going to grow in the future? And in this case, it seems that there will be some low growth. 
So the number of users is likely to increase, not significantly, not 10% year over year, but maybe two, three, four percent is a reasonable estimate. So when I'm looking into chess.com as, as a website, I want to understand, are you going to get more revenue in the future? Or is it a completely mature business in a way that they, this is it? This is as far as they can go. And from now on, it's just continuing the same business model over and over again, bringing the same types of revenue. And I don't think that is the case. This is how the valuation, the summary looks like. So first we estimated the number of users. We got the free users. We know the revenue that they bring close to 5.1 million a year. Then we have the premium user subscription, the revenue that they bring in 116 million. So if we combine the two, we get to 121 million, but that is the revenue. They have a lot of expenses to cover. First of all, of course, there's hosting when it comes to keeping the website up and running. There are some support functions such as finance, legal, HR, marketing, although marketing, I think they need to step up a little bit. You know what I mean? But then there's also, for example, um, more technical people who are looking into the, the code in the back end. Then there's the streamers who are also being sponsored by chess.com. And of course, that's rightfully so because they do promote their website. And if we take a look at all of these expenses, right? If we subtract all that, we get to the profit. Of course, including taxes, we get to the net profit. Normally for a company that is, for example, in manufacturing, the net margin would be 5-10%. If we take a look at service companies, if we take a look at software companies, it tends to be higher 20, 25%. And I think chess.com is within this range. So if that is the case, then the estimated yearly profit is somewhere around 24 million. Now, how stable is this? How mature company it is? I think that, um, as I mentioned before, chess is a fairly addictive game. And in, in that sense, I cannot imagine that somehow suddenly 30% of the members are, have stopped playing. Um, and also if we take a look at the Google Trends, I think that it will continue in kind of a healthy growing direction. Hence, I've used a multiple of P of 14 that is more reasonable for a company that is at this stage. And that gives a valuation of 339.3 million. That is the value. I want to point out that we've used quite some assumptions and that is what I think is reasonable but you can come up with your own. This is a fairly simple model and you can try to do this as an exercise. Now, let's take a look at a few different scenarios. The first one is a bit of a lower valuation based on, basically we're, we're assuming that there are not that many premium users or that m many of them are being online almost every day, that there are not really many that are not active. Um, and if, if that is the case and if the average subscription is $6 instead of um, the seven that we had before. And if they're not that profitable, then we get the valuation down to 150 million. So this is just um, a simple exercise to show the sensitivity that it can. My assumptions are my assumptions, but if they're significantly wrong, the valuation could move in either direction significantly. Same in, in the third scenario, if they're more profitable and they're expected to grow much, much faster than I'm anticipating, then the value would be much, much higher. Now, there was a, an event that has been discussed a lot, and I want, don't want to go through that, the, the Hans Niemann lawsuit, but I want to point out that there was an information there. Multi-billion dollar behemoth chess.com LLC. Now, LLC, not only the website, but everything else that we mentioned. So chess.com is, in my opinion, what's most valuable there. And I don't think that this is correct. Multi-billion dollar, that means at least two billion. And if I even use the most kind of optimistic assumptions, I, I cannot justify evaluation even close to a billion. But for this to be the case, for this sentence to be correct, um, what chess.com as the website should have is over six million premium users. And that means that if we reverse engineer the formula, that means that only 14% of the premium users are online on any given day and taking into account uh, the addictiveness of the game, I don't think that is that is the case, but I could be wrong. And if, and I'll, I'll go back to the valuation slide because I think this is the most valuable one, um, at least the outcome of the whole exercise. Um, if, if any of you has more information regarding any of these assumptions, uh, if you're working at chess.com, of course you cannot share that, but if you 
want to reach out and to even point out, hey, you're significantly wrong with something. That's absolutely fine. If you're a streamer and you're looking into this and you have better estimates, feel free to share that. I mean, valuing a private company is a difficult task with information available, not to mention with with without any of the information. But I think that it's quite a good model that we have so far. It is simple to use. It can be tweaked based on um, based on new information. And uh, as always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comment, please do let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.